thank Laura for that um, excessive <laughs> introduction. Um, and all of the board members and the leadership of day one and for this honor. I wanna express my boundless gratitude for, to Anne for hitting the ground running and being the perfectly skilled, compassionate and energetic person needed to take day one forward. And I wanna congratulate the amazing Youth Advisory Board for being amazing and to their well -deserved, for their well-deserved honor tonight. Thank you to all of the sponsors and the day one board and the staff for their tremendous work and especially Sashay Turner, the exceptional senior development manager. Um, I need to say as many times as I have stood up here and spoken to day one's friends and supporters, it's never been from the outside looking in. It's somewhat of an out-of-body experience, but a good one. And I am truly proud and grateful for this honor. Over the years, a lot of people have asked me why I started day one, usually with a very meaningful pause. And it felt somewhat awkward sometimes to not give them what it seemed like they were looking for, which was a pers personal story that I or a loved one had experienced domestic violence. While my upbringing was a little chaotic, it wasn't at all abusive. I had some wonderful and some unpleasant experiences with partners. I think I had the same vague understanding of consent that many people my age did at that time, which was that you did what the other person wanted because you liked them well enough. Then I was exposed to enough social justice issues in college that I knew I wanted to commit my work life to women's issues. And the opportunity emerged after law school to work in domestic violence. And I was excited to have a job in a field that I cared about. But I had not been in an abusive relationship. That came later. That happened during my time at day one. Years into being a lawyer, and an executive director, and a relatively privileged and financially stable white cisgendered woman. I gave a lot of thought to talking about this tonight. There's about five or six people in this room who know about this, and I came here with a table of 10. I thought about how it would come across, because I've never talked about it while at day one or anywhere publicly. I talked about, I thought about how people would be confused and skeptical, possibly even judgmental. And at the end of the day, my reasons for keeping this to myself are about my life, the same way any survivor's decisions are. Something like, I've made bad choices in the past, so I'll be blamed for this. Or I'm hyper accomplished, so people will think I'm fine. I don't speak English, so I can't communicate with authorities. I'm too old to be in a relationship. I'm too young to be trusted. For me, I was the executive director of a domestic violence organization. What were people going to think? And then, like every other survivor, the old conventional favorite, shame. You might be wondering what I was thinking, but there's nothing new here. I told myself it wasn't physical, so it wasn't that bad. It's just a phase. I'm strong. It, this will pass. Or maybe if I can be enough of a comfort or a good enough girlfriend, the name calling and the diminishment and the condescension and this constant criticizing will stop. Absolutely textbook. Even with all my knowledge and understanding of how people end up in abusive relationships and why they are so difficult to end, I spent years walking on eggshells, anxious about getting them angry, nervous about the random things I would be blamed for, expending my emotional energy, imagining all the ways that I would be the cause of things going sideways. If you're sitting in this room, I don't need to tell you that's no way to live. Throughout this time, I led day one. I collaborated with colleagues and peers and board members, many of whom are survivors themselves. 
and I talked with countless young people who had been harmed by a partner. I feel like I owe them all an apology. And those of you here who do this work might be thinking right now, no, you don't, I get that. But I know that as I let them share their stories with others and with me, I let my own shame and conflicting emotions keep me from confirming through my experiences the things that would have probably been helpful for them to hear, how this can happen to anyone, how I know what it is to think this will be better next week, how I've also tried to figure out how I can please someone and not set them off, and how you can have that vague sense at all times that this must stop but have no idea how to get there. And I do apologize for holding that back. Thankfully, there is a way out. Day one shows people how that can happen. It is what day one does. I want to talk a little bit about the strength of survivors. I know people find it hard to believe that survivors were strong before they encountered somebody who caused them harm. The folks here who know me know I'm a lot of things but none of them would say I'm not strong. When someone navigates an emergence from a crisis, it's natural to see it as a display of strength. But it doesn't mean that when people get hurt, it resulted from some kind of personal weakness or limitation. It's a fallacy I've seen many times over 20 years with day one. It can be a parent saying, this is horrible. What a relief that I know this would never happen to my daughter or it can take the form of questioning a survivor's background or childhood. But I beg you not to make these easy assumptions. You may never know who is around you that is a survivor of intimate partner violence. They may not tell you for countless reasons. So my request is that you, that we, keep in mind that someone's achievements, their station in life, their upbringing, their strength, they're all irrelevant. What we can do is be there for survivors and get ahead of the issue through awareness and education as day one has been doing for 21 years. I wanted to share this tonight because if you need confirmation of how important this work is, please remember that as a longtime seasoned professional with 15 years of day one of, of, of learning about domestic violence at day one and before that as a lawyer, I found myself subjected to many of the behaviors that day one teaches about in workshops, preceded by many or all of the warning signs that are listed on our website, and subjected and paralyzed by many of the barriers that survivors face when trying to leave. And in order for day one to continue this work, we need you to support this organization this evening, this coming year, and in the future. Many of you have contributed in advance or earlier tonight, and I'm gonna ask that if you already gave, please give a little more, even just a little. And if you didn't yet give, please use the QR codes on your program to give in any amount, because it adds up, and every single one of you is needed in this fight. And if you're watching this later on video, you can give at day1ny.org. <laughs> I know how this works. <laughs> Lastly, I'm pledging to give day one at least $1,000 a year, hopefully more for the, at least the next five years, hopefully longer, and I hope some of you will consider doing the same. Thank you.